I don't know about you, but sometimes when I look through the viewfinder of a camera, I can see that the focusing screen is very, very dirty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to clean the focusing screen on a 35mm camera. I'm going to show you what to do, what not to do, explain why, and uh, I want you to know before we get started, all three of the cameras I'm going to use in this video are trashed. The electronics are completely shot. They are not recoverable for repair. So I don't want you to feel badly about the fact that I'm about to destroy some focusing screens. There are two basic types of focusing screens in a 35 millimeter SLR, removable and non-removable. Non-removable focusing screens like this Canon AE-1 have are fixed. We cannot get them out. So if the focusing screen in this camera is damaged or destroyed in the course of being cleaned, that means it's going to need a professional repair in order to restore the focusing screen to full usability because accessing the focusing screen in a camera like this one specifically requires a decent amount of disassembly. However, some cameras like the AE-1 program here have a removable focusing screen. This is a pretty easy one to access because all you have to do is click a switch and the focusing screen is going to drop. Removable focusing screens give you the ability to clean the inside of the screen and the prism as well with pretty good results. And if you have dirt that is trapped in between the screen and the prism, then you can clean it out with this type of screen a little bit more easily. Before we get too much further, let me show you what I mean by some of that. If you look at, if you have your viewfinder here, okay, and your eyeball, this is your eyeball, is looking through the viewfinder, there's something called a pentaprism or a pentamirror right here. And then your mirror for your SLR is right there. The light comes through your lens to the mirror, up into the prism, it bounces around like magic, and over to your eye. This prism inverts and reflects the, the, the image coming through the lens so that it looks normal to you. So between the bottom of the prism here and the mirror is a focusing screen. The light projected onto the focusing screen is in focus. The distance from the focusing screen to this mirror and then to the back of this lens is the same as the distance from the film plane to the back of the lens. All that this prism does is take that focused light and ensure that it's focused when it reaches your eye and in the proper orientation. So dirt can either get onto the bottom of the focusing screen here, the top of the focusing screen between the screen and the prism, or the underside of the prism here. If your screen is not removable, dirt on the prism and the focusing screen top side where it meets the prism, very, very hard, sometimes impossible to remove. Uh, dirt on the bottom can be removed. So we're going to start here with this Canon AE-1 program and I'm first going to show you what, what things you should and should not have for this repair or cleaning maintenance, whatever you call it. Bulb blower right here is a good idea. This is very important. The next thing you'll want to have is a lens brush of some sort. Don't use a lens pen. Those have those little suction cup things on them. Those are a really good way to mess up your focusing screen, your mirror, or anything that's in here. You really want a brush, a horsehair brush like this to use, okay? We're also going to need some cotton swabs. And just in case there is some dirt on this screen that's very hard to get rid of, we need some distilled water. This is, uh, so distilled water is very important for this. You don't want to use tap water because it has minerals in it. You don't want to use filtered water from your Brita or uh, Pure Filter or, or Zero, whatever other brand you have, because there's still minerals in it. Dis distilled water is very, very important for this repair. Things we do not want to use include vinegar. This is rubbing alcohol right here. I'm going to show you what happens with rubbing alcohol when in just a minute, or any other kind of solvent, Goo Gone, lighter fluid, any of that stuff is going to be a problem. Viewfinder focusing screens are made of plastic, and that plastic tends to melt when the uh, wrong chemicals are applied to it. And uh, what happens is the plastic has all of these really tiny little ridges on it, like fingerprints, but microscopic. And when the light is focused on those ridges, they grab the light coming through the lens, and so they give you a focused image. 
if those ridges melt because they're exposed to a chemical, then uh, they aren't going to work correctly anymore. Best case scenario for, for melted ridges is that you just have some blurry spots on your screen or some areas where the image isn't as well focused. So before I get to removing the focusing screen from this camera, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at how to handle dirt, which is on the surface of the screen here. First step is always going to be your bulb blaster. Never, ever, ever use compressed air or canned air for this because it is too powerful. It could damage some of the sensitive bits in this mechanism. You might notice that my bulb blaster has some glue here. I, I used Gorilla Glue on, on both ends of this to help give it better air pressure by sealing up any uh, sealing up holes. And that is as much pressure as you really want to put onto your screen. All right. So, I mean, honestly, the screen in this camera is very clean, but we're going to pretend that didn't work. Next up, we're going to try to give the brush a try. And we're just going to brush away at any dirt that's on the screen, just like this. And usually that will be enough, by the way, to get rid of any dirt that's on your screen. But sometimes you might have some tricky, tricky dirt. Now you notice that there's some foam here. That mirror bumper foam, when it gets old, can turn really sticky and gummy and break apart. And if that gummy mirror bumper foam gets onto your focusing screen, it's going to be a real pain to get rid of. Often, it's impossible to get rid of. But if you have some loose dirt that didn't come up with the brush and didn't come up with the bulb blaster, you can take a cotton swab and just kind of dab at it and see if that will help you get rid of it. Okay. It, oh, it's still there. There is still some, some dirt that is just inside of, uh, or just on the surface of this focusing screen. That's where the distilled water comes in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my distilled water and a cotton swab just like this. And now I'm going to use the distilled water to try and dab up any dirt that is on the screen. And sometimes that will work, sometimes that will not. You might be able to see that there is a water scar forming on this screen as I do that. And that is because, in truth, this is not distilled water. My grocery store has been out of it for three months. I've been trying to get some to make this video and haven't been able to. Now we're going to take the bulb blower and we're going to blow some air onto that and you can see that the water screen, the water stain has evaporated. So if there was dirt there and we were able to get it up with a cotton swab wetted with, with distilled water, the screen would now be clean uh, and anything remaining would be a scar from that dirt. And it is called a scar by the way, because no, it does not go away. Okay. So that was really easy, and that's the process you would use for a camera that has a screen that is permanently fixed inside. Any dirt behind the screen, it's just kind of stuck there. You can, in that case, if you have dirt behind the screen, try to dislodge it by putting your bulb blaster right into the edge of the screen there and seeing if some air getting behind the screen and between it and the focusing prism will dislodge that dirt enough that it can go off to the side and at least not be in your viewfinder. That's really your only option for, for with non-removable screens that get dirt behind them, other than a professional repair. Okay, that's all well and good, but if you've got a camera where the viewfinder screen does drop out, here we go. Now, when you use when you take out the viewfinder focusing screen, if you just have the screen itself, the textured side faces the lens, the smooth side faces away from the lens, okay? That's very important to get correct. Now that we have this removed, if you have dirt on the prism, the process is fairly similar to what we just did with the exception that when we clean the prism, it is okay to clean this glass with lens cleaning fluid, like this is the Zeiss fluid that I use on this exact sort of repair. I uh, actually grabbed the wrong bottle because this is what the labeling looks like now. And this stuff is fantastic. I don't get anything from them from saying that. I just happen to really like it. It's exceptional. And using 
some lens cleaning tissues exactly as you would in my SLR mirror cleaning video or how to clean a lens videos is a good way to gently clean any residual dirt off of the prism. Then with your focusing screen removed, when it can be removed, you would go about cleaning this in the exact same process as you clean the underside. Now, why is it so important that we use distilled water instead of rubbing alcohol? I'm not going to lie, I do actually feel kind of badly about ruining this perfectly good focusing screen, but I'll tell you what, AE1 program focusing screens are a dime a dozen. So here I'm going to put distilled water on this side of the focusing screen. And this is the textured side of it, and you can tell that by the way that the, the water is getting into the ridges and just kind of staying there. As you can see, it just really, it's fine. It doesn't do any damage. It, it makes the screen a little bit wet for a little bit, but but it's not ruining anything. Now, let's do the exact same thing, but with rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol will dissolve your focusing screen ridges. It might be a little bit hard to see. Let's see if this helps. It might be a little bit hard to see, but the focusing screen ridges over here where I've been using the rubbing alcohol, have a little bit of a haziness to them. And that haziness is because the very, very fine ridges have started to dissolve and blunt a little bit. And that's what happens when you use rubbing alcohol. It is going to leave a rubbing alcohol scar on this focusing screen, uh, which is now going to go in the recycling bin. And um, it will render it not usable anymore. So let me see if I can show you what's happening to this focusing screen as the rubbing alcohol affects it. You can see the shiny side there. And what's happening there is that it's reflecting light, right? Instead of it being a matte surface, it's reflecting it. That's because that side of the focusing screen is now pretty darn smooth compared to the ridged side over there. And that means that light will not focus on that side of the screen anymore. Uh, it will get slightly better as the rubbing alcohol dries, you'll notice, but at the same time, you can now see that there's a different pattern to the ridges on that side, and that is the rubbing alcohol scar forming. And that will result in uh, poor focusing screen performance. So that's permanent because that's the plastic being dissolved or melted by the uh, rubbing alcohol. There is no way to repair that. So that's the reason that you don't want to use rubbing alcohol or other solvents on these screens. And you want to stick to distilled water if you have to use any kind of cleaning fluid whatsoever. Thank you for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about checking these every couple of days and answering questions. If you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos, and if I have the technical know-how and equipment, I'm more than happy to make those. One last thing, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Gotta get up, Steinbeck. I have to turn off the camera.